were just outside of Cork at the world-famous Belly Malou uh, Cookery School. I'm with Rory O'Connell and Darina Allen's brother. Hi. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Welcome. So tell me about the school. It's what, since 1983? Yeah, we celebrated our 30th anniversary with a big party a couple of years ago. And it started off, Darina and I started off quite small here on the farm. And we're this, the farm here at the Cookery School is an organic farm, 100 acres. And we've been organic for about nearly 15 years now. So we grow a lot of the food that, not all of it, but I a lot. I saw your chickens and your yeah, eggs. So. We've got, yeah, but <laughs> I mean, we've got an acre of glass houses and all yeah. sorts of different gardens. So the growing of the food is very important to the teaching as well. So, and then tell me about the different classes that you have. Well, uh, for example, this week we've had a one week what we call introductory class with people from all over the world are in to learn and to be inspired and then the, there are half day classes next week we've got a middle eastern cookery class in the beginning of the week and then at the end of the week we've got a seafood cooking class and then in september we'll go back to our starting our 12 week course and we do three of those every year a three month course and it's like um gastronomic boot camp <laughs> so 62 <laughs> students from all over the world and they can live on campus most of them do and um we take them through as much as we can possibly fit in in 12 yeah. weeks and the first in the first morning when they come before they do any cooking before they do anything else they all go out traipse out of the gardens and they plant something that's the first thing and then by the end of the three months generally speaking whatever they've planted it might be a radish seed or a spring onion yes, or a scallion yes. they harvest that and they cook it but that single moment of for some of them the realization that actually most of this comes from what's what we cook and eat comes from under our feet is incredibly important yes, yes. and that's part that ethos is part of everything we do here well it's funny that farm and farm to table is such a big movement now mm -hmm. but you look at countries like i'm from western canada and mm -hmm. ireland so many countries have been doing it for years that's and years. right that's right yeah i mean this is the way people lived it's the way people ate in the countryside you know they they grew a certain amount of their own food and anything else that they anything they didn't grow it came from the locality mm -hmm. and, and of course things have changed very much since then but for some people i'm not going to say a lot of people but definitely for a growing number of people that's what's happening and that change is a very good positive change from looking at your your schedule and the, the menus you're doing back to basics food none of this molecular gastronomy and what yes, do you yeah. think of those trends i think there's merit in all of them mm -hmm. i think they may pe make people think about food it's a bit like the nouvelle cuisine movement of france back in yeah, the day yes yeah. very little of that has stayed with us some of it has i think the same uh, applies to molecular gastronomy but actually i do think the more we go on, the less we'll be putting things into plastic bags and sealing them before we cook them, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, that's you right. know. I mean, deconstructing is fine. If you're a very, very great chef with plenty of chefs behind you to help with the deconstruction process, the more you deconstruct an ingredient, the more difficult it is to maintain the integrity of the ingredients. So that's what I would say about well, that. Well, that's so true because I've been to many Michelin restaurants where mm. I'm thinking, how many people actually touched mm -hmm. my plate before yes, yeah, it got to yeah. me? And is it better as a result of all of those touchings? So that's, a, you know, it's, sometimes it's sensational, but it's not always sensational. For me, I want to see a chef that can make a perfect piece of meat. Yes, exactly. Or a perfect roast chicken. Yes, but and understand the subtleties. That's right. And, and this is a real issue as regards cooking schools, because with the young, with younger people who are, um, you know, ambitious to become great chefs, sometimes, it, you know, if their training is in a restaurant that does purely sort of molecular gastronomy, they don't often learn the, the really important things about grilling, as you say, a piece of meat. And why, why, what heat? Why that amount of heat? Why does it get that amount of colour? Why is it not getting that amount of colour? I mean, the keystones. I mean, René Rizepi, who's a genius, will, will, know, will have learned all of those things. Mm -hmm. I'm worried that other people won't learn those things because they're trying to jump forwards to being able to do all these incredible tweezel diesel smoke yes, puffs and yes. all sorts of well it's interesting you know you're teaching back to the basics and it's the the foundation of mm -hmm. cooking yes, there's yeah. a lot of cooking young students they want to learn oh i can make a foam i can make a froth i yes, can make yeah. 
Yeah, sure. I don't think yes, that's yeah. integrity from a chef. Yes, 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 yeah. I mean, we do uh, lots of refined cooking as well, but um, it refined to the point, uh, and not necessarily molecular gastronomy, but, you know, more finely sliced, more delicately sauced, mm -hmm. thinner, lighter, smaller, but all the time with reference to the ingredient and not losing, as I say, the integrity of the ingredients. Yeah. Now, you're starting, how long has this been on? This is the Literary Culinary yes. Fest. Yes, exactly. It's a, it's a sort of a food and drinks literary festival, which we run in May of every year. Yes. And we just had our third one this year, and please God, next May we'll have our fourth one. And it's proved very, very successfully. I mean, there's a tradition of writing books mm -hmm. here in the school mm -hmm. and at Ballymaloo. I've written my book, and Rhea's written lots of books, and Rachel, who's part of school, has written books. And did, of course, Mrs. Allen, Doreen's mother-in-law, yes. the grand dame of yes. Irish food. She, of course, uh, wrote a seminal, the Ballymaloo cookery book, a very important Irish cookery book. So we thought, well, you know, we should do something. And so we invite all of the great... Uh, or as many as we can of the published authors on the subject of food and drink from around the world to come for a couple of days in May, hang out, and then we do all sorts of events, readings, um, panel discussions, cookery demonstrations, foraging, um, music dancing, yes. also, and eating, yes. lots and lots of yes. eating. Well, thank you so much for taking your time. Not my Beautiful pleasure. school. It's a very impressive school. About 100 acres. 100 acres, yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much. Not at all. My pleasure. Thank you for coming to visit us.